All right. Um, the anatomy of the oral cavity, mouth. So what are we gonna do? Well, um, I've, I've talked about most of the structures inside the mouth before, because I'm not terribly well organized. I just make videos about whatever I'm thinking about that week. So this is like an introductory video to the structures in the oral cavity, right? It's like, it's your standard anatomy class, oral cavity, chunk in a textbook, oral cavity. We're gonna introduce it, kind of light touch, talk about, you know, boundaries, what the actual space is, what's in the space, the other spaces nearby, you know, anatomy stuff. So it'll introduce you to the oral cavity and then we talk about the tongue, the teeth, the salivary glands, or oh, I'm giving it all away, aren't I? In other videos in more detail. One of my favorite models, big head. So the oral cavity, now the oral cavity proper is the space within the teeth. Close your mouth. Feel it with your tongue, where your tongue is, where your tongue is. That's the oral cavity proper. So this is the oral fissure, this opening anteriorly to the external world. And then we've got a space, haven't we, again? <laughs> Use your tongue. Between your teeth and your, and your cheeks. Eh? Of course, if you put your teeth together, you can't get your tongue out. So your tongue is in your oral, cav oral cavity proper. But then the space between your tongue, sorry, between your, the space between your teeth and your cheeks on either side is the oral vestibule. And this also happens anteriorly, doesn't it? There is a space between your teeth and your lips. That's the oral vestibule. Got it? So the oral vestibule is outside the teeth. The oral cavity proper is inside the teeth. You know, between the... The roof of the oral cavity, you can feel it with your tongue, your tongue is pressing against it, is the palate. The palate is the roof of the oral cavity and really it's the hard palate, the bony palate. Posteriorly, it becomes a soft part. We'll look at that in a moment. That's something else. Inferiorly, so the floor of the oral cavity is the base of the tongue, inferior to the tongue, what the tongue is tied down into. And then the oral cavity links posteriorly to the pharynx, the space posterior to the oral cavity through the oropharyngeal isthmus. And it's isthmus, like a narrow connection, right? Oro, pharyngeal, isthmus. Um, and the soft palate really is the roof of that oro, pharyngeal, isthmus. So that oro, pharyngeal, isthmus is the connection between the oral cavity and the pharynx, and then all the structures that the pharynx links to. That oro, pharyngeal, isthmus back there also gets called the isthmus of the fauces because you can see, you can just about see there on either side. There are pillars, right? So pillars running up on either side and they're actually linking the soft palate to the tongue. We've got some muscles in there. So the isthmus of the fauces is that narrowing between those, those pillars. What are the functions of the oral cavity? Well, this is, we put food in here and drink. So it's the first part of the gastrointestinal tract. So the oral cavity is involved in digestion talk about saliva that gets involved with that mastication we break the food up by chewing it um, and uh, this is also where air goes in air also goes in here so the airway um, you know the respiratory tree is linked to the outside world through the oral cavity and through the nasal cavity and we can breathe just through the nasal cavity we can breathe more air through the air, oral cavity. And the other thing about moving air around is that the oral cavity is important in speech. The vocal cords make the sound, the vibration, but we use our tongue, our teeth, our cheeks, our lips, all of the structures of the oral cavity to form speech, which is very useful to humans. All right, so structures of the oral cavity. Well, lips, lips are, you know, 
we talked about them being the, the oral fissure, lips are muscular and fibrous, and we see these bands of muscle running around them means that the lips can close off the oral cavity from the outside world. Um, we have skin on the outside, which becomes a mucous membrane on the inside of the lips. So it's kind of a specialized, quite a thin skin. It's, you know, it's uh, more susceptible to cold air, gets chapped in the winter, that sort of thing. So lips and then cheeks are, well, again, we've got muscle here forming the cheek, skin on the outside, mucous membrane on the inside. So lips, uh, anything, sorry, cheeks, anything to do with the cheeks gets called a uh, buckle. Lips and cheeks are important in digestion. We're using structures to make the, kind of like the first part of the tube. I said it was the first part of the gastrointestinal tract. So the cheeks and the lips keep the food in. Lips are particularly useful in drinking fluids, um, also in um, speech and, and that sort of thing. All right, let's look. Whoa, look inside. Inside the oral cavity, there are teeth. So, as I said, the oral cavity proper is the space within the teeth, like medial to the teeth, posterior to the teeth, anterior to the isthmus, that sort of thing. Right? You can see the isthmus now, you see how it narrows? We have 20 primary teeth in childhood that then get replaced by 32 uh, permanent teeth which we retain through adulthood if we brush them. Um, and teeth are important in mastication of food. They are great for breaking up food. And also in speech, we use our teeth quite a bit in with our tongue to make various sounds. Here is the palate. I said the palate forms the roof of the oral cavity. When we close our mouths, when we swallow, the tongue presses against the palate. And in truth, this is the hard palate here. Can you see how there is a, there is a curve to depression? So that actually, when you close your mouth, the tongue fills the whole oral cavity. So that, that curved roof of the mouth, that curved palate makes space for the tongue. And it's a little bit roughened anteriorly, which helps grab food, move food around against it, and that sort of thing. It's covered in an oral mucosa, and in truth, the oral cavity proper, its roof then is the hard palate, which is made up of the, the maxilla. So the maxilla is actually, is this bone here. So this is the maxilla and it continues inferiorly here. This is maxilla and the most posterior part of the hard palate. We have two palatine bones. They're kind of like long, tall pyramids that reach up into the nasal cavities. So maxilla and palatine bones make up the hard palate, and that is the roof of the oral cavity proper. Now, here's the hard palate. So here's the oral cavity. There's the tongue, teeth. Here's the hard palate. So maxilla, then palatine bone, and then this is the soft palate. So the soft palate is muscular, it's mobile, and what it does, it, it gets pulled up and separates off the nasal cavity from the oropharynx when you're swallowing. So food goes down this way and not this way. If, if you're a kid and you laugh and you're drinking milk, then this thing flaps around and milk goes up and comes out through your nose. But the soft palate is posterior to the hard palate, and it is superior to that oropharyngeal isthmus. So this is the isthmus. This is the pharynx back here, nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx. Palate. Salivary glands. There are three pairs of salivary glands. So, okay, look, there's the tongue, lips, chin. If we look inferiorly, we can see a salivary gland there. This is actually wrapping around this muscle here, which is the floor, the mylohyoid muscle. This is the submandibular salivary gland. There's one on either side. And if I split this in half, whoa, oh, I did, probably didn't need to do that actually. <laughs> um, there's a, so I've taken the tongue out. There's a sublingual salivary gland. So the sublingual salivary gland is curving around here. It's inferior to the tongue, whereas the submandibular salivary gland is back here, wraps around posteriorly and sends a, sends a duct. The ducts of the submandibular glands open either side of the frenulum, the thing that's tying the tongue down, 
on either side. So submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. I said there was another pair. This is the parotid salivary gland here. So parotid means it's next to the ear. So the parotid salivary gland has a duct as well, runs around the master muscle and opens inside the buccal cavity in there. So parotid gland, oh, submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Those all duct into the oral cavity and saliva helps dissolve the things that we're eating, which enable us to taste. Um, they have enzymes in there that start off digestion. They keep the oral mucosa moist. You know what it's like when you've got a dry mouth, right? So saliva is helping prevent that. And saliva helps uh, prevent tooth decay, decay, as does your tongue. Tongue, right, I better put this back together. So the, the tongue is very muscular. It's almost entirely muscular. It's covered in taste buds. You may be aware that the tongue is important in taste and speech. Um, it has an interesting epithelium. So we have um, phyloform papillae making sharp things, which gives our tongue texture, roughness, which is important in moving the bolus of food around our mouth to help with mastication, chewing, and also helps clean your teeth. You're always picking away your, your teeth with your tongue, aren't you? So it's important in digestion, taste, speech. Taste is one of those things that's incredibly important in normal function. You don't realize how important it is until it's gone. And that's an issue in some cancer patients. Anyway, off topic as usual. So the tongue is, is muscular um, and it, um, it, it uses an interesting collection of cranial nerves to do its various jobs, but there's a whole other video on that. Can we, uh, can we see the, the frenulum? Kind of. You know what I mean by frenulum though. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going to look in a mirror and lift your tongue up and you'll see the central wedge that's tying your tongue down to the floor of the mouth. That's the frenulum. And either side of that is an opening for the duct of the submandibular gland on each side. All right. Those are the things inside the oral cavity. And look, can you see that those are those pillars I was talking about, they're pillars of muscle. So the oral cavity here narrows as it goes between those pillars. And that's the oropharyngeal isthmus. Oh look, there's a tonsil there on either side. And it just, anatomy is like that. It just goes on and on and on. Can we finish off with some cranial nerves just because cranial nerves are fun, right? So those are the structures of the oral cavity. We've talked about the palate in another video, the tongue, the teeth, the salivary glands. There, are, there is more detail that I've already done. This is an introduction to the stuff I already did in the future, but in the past, because, all right. Um, cranial nerves, the major sensory cranial nerve of the face, so the sen sensory from all the skin of the face is the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five. So it's, it is also the major sensory nerve inside the oral cavity, including the teeth. It has a couple of branches. So the maxillary branch up a bit, mandibular branch lower bit. That's the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, the major sensory nerve of the face. The um, facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, is a major parasympathetic motor nerve of the face. What that means is, is, is that it's the, the, the snotty, weepy, dribbly nerve of the face. So it's, it is innovating the salivary glands down here. It's innovating the mucosal glands in here and that sort of thing. It's also, the facial nerve is also carrying taste, a special sensation from the anterior part of the tongue. Whereas the trigeminal nerve carries general sensation like touch and pain and stuff. <clears throat> I told you that the tongue was fun with cranial nerves. Um, now the, oh, the parotid glands are actually innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, and the muscles of the tongue are innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. Cranial nerves are particularly important whenever we talk about the anatomy of the head and the face. Um, I just wanted to get, so that's, that's either a recap for you or an introduction for you into other topics. Cranial nerves, that is. All right, there we go. The oral cavity, the anatomy, textbook stuff, what you find in there. If you want to know more, 
search my name and whatever topic and if I've done it, it'll pop up and if I haven't done it, um, I'll put it on my to-do list. See you next week.